Hello, hello, welcome to day two. Welcome to day two of the Rhythm Challenged to Rhythm Talent workshops that we're doing. Uh, I think this is going to be a ton of fun. Day one was great. People really enjoyed it. Uh, I think day two is going to be great. We're finally live on TikTok. I just recently got enough followers, so that's fantastic. Um, the technology is, of course, still not working exactly how I wanted. So if you see me looking around, there's there's all kinds of stuff going <laughs> on because technology is what it is. Um, but just a quick recap, what the Rhythm Challenge to Rhythm Talent workshops are all about is taking you from being a little insecure about rhythm. I think so many students I've worked with have a little bit of struggles with rhythm. And my goal is to help you feel like you're naturally talented at rhythm. Yesterday was all about one, getting on the same page about the counting side of things. I think a lot of us were taught how to count or how note values work a quarter notes, one beat, an eighth notes, half a beat, etc. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we're on the same page with that. For your homework from day one was to go to quickstartclarinet.com slash get started, get access to the free members area so that you have the um, rhythm tree appendix downloads, which has all of the counting and like tons of different time signatures. So if you need that, that's quickstartclarinet.com slash get started so that we're again on the same page about the counting. And the other even more important part of day one was to give you all the confidence that you are 100% capable of learning rhythm. There is no natural talented. It's not I've got rhythm or I don't got rhythm. Everybody's capable of developing the skill of rhythm and learning it. So what I want to be doing today is talking about that other half. Like I said yesterday, the counting and the note values is one really important part of rhythm, but there's a whole other aspect of rhythm, which is the actual steady beat. And that's what today is all about, is some exercises to work on finding the steady beat and figuring out how to have a good, strong, predictable, steady beat. The reason why the steady beat is so important and why it's the whole other half of rhythm is because without the steady beat, it doesn't matter. You're missing the context of the note values. That's what note values are there for, is to have context for where the, the notes are, how the notes fit into the beat. And without that context, you don't have true rhythm. You have what I call fake rhythm, <laughs> where you're kind of doing note values and kind of putting things together, but it's not really feelable to the listener. And that's what's really important. Um, this is just a quick little story. My dad, uh, before I was born, played in like a rock band. Um, and actually, now that he's retired, he plays guitar in a band. Again, more sort of bluesy, rocky, that kind of genre. Um, and he said when, when he was playing in the band, he can always tell when the band's doing a good job because there's a lot of people out there dancing. And I think that's so true, even though in as clarinetists mostly um, and classical musicians, we don't dance to classical music anymore. Uh, but I think that idea of making it so a listener could dance to it is super important. It has to be something that's feelable and the, the pulse, the steady beat needs to be something that the listener can actually grab onto and predict. It makes the listener feel so much more comfortable if the performer knows where the steady beat is. Um, and it's that idea of like my dad would say where when they were doing good, when they were locked in, when they had a good groove, the audience could feel it and they'd be dancing. And to bring up the idea of dancing in classical music, just real quick, actually Bach's music, Johann Sebastian Bach, one of the like very quintessential classical composers, uh, he actually half of his music or a good chunk of his music was literally dances. The Baroque era was mainly church music and court music. And the court music were all these courtly dances. So if you ever heard like a Sarabande or a Courant or those kinds of things, uh, a Gig, that's a really commonly known one. Those are all Baroque dances and all of those pieces were meant to be danced to. Then over the years, like some guy named Wagner, like really put a dampening on, on all of the, uh, fun enjoyment of classical music a little bit. Um, 
and now we just sit and listen. But even contemporary classical music, I think, should have a little bit of, of a dancingness to it and, and a little of that feel. So that's why the steady beat is so important. And like I've been saying, it's a skill that can be developed. So if you're a little unconfident about your steady beat or unconfident fitting rhythms into the steady beat, it's absolutely something you can develop. So I have a little exercise that I want to try out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sing a tune that you're probably familiar with. And what I want you to do is just clap along to the beat, maybe move along, you can dance along to the beat if you want, um, just to experience finding the beat in music and show you how it's 100% possible to find that beat. So here we go. Bum, 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 bum. Bum 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 That was easy, right? Super easy to feel that steady beat and know where it was and predict it and move to it and feel that motion and the sound in motion. Um, that's just a quick reference to one of the best books for musicians I think everybody should read is Sound in Motion by David McGill. And that's the whole point is we, we can feel that motion to it. As opposed to if I sing the same notes, but not with the steady beat and without context of the steady beat, it becomes much harder to follow. That might be something like this and try to sort of move along to this and feel the beat. Bum, 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 bum. That was really hard, right? You couldn't find where that beat was. You couldn't feel the predictability of it. It was hard for me to sing it so disjointed like that even. Um, so that's a perfect example of when we have bad rhythm and that's why the steady beat is so super, super important. So hopefully that's starting to click and make sense and you're understanding why the steady beat is so important and so necessary and that critical missing half because you can sit there all day and do uh, eighth, 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 or quarter. But if you're not actually thinking about how that fits into beam, bum, 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 beam, beam, bum, and how it's connected to a predictability and to the actual motion, then you only have half of rhythm and it doesn't really count. So what I have for your little homework, your little challenge that I want you to tackle for today to help you find the beat is I have two options. You can do either or both, depending on sort of what you like to do. I know there's all the overachiever out there, so we're definitely going to do both. Um, and they're sort of split into a little more analytical and a little more involved. So the little bit more analytical one that I would recommend doing is to get out your metronome and set it to whatever beat you want and just start moving to it. So let me grab my metronome real quick so I can actually demonstrate this. Um, so what we're going to do is just turn the metronome on and just move. You can uh, uh, dance, you can move your body, you can tap your foot, you can clap. Again, if you're a little more analytical person, you're probably going to do the tapping your foot or clapping. I get it if you're not super comfortable moving, but moving's pretty fun too. So I encourage you to give it a try. But we're going to turn our metronome on. Hopefully that's not too loud. And just sort of move to it. Tap your foot. You can sort of do some pseudo conducting if you want, uh, whatever you need to be feeling that pulse, then you're gonna turn the metronome off, but you're gonna keep feeling the pulse. And you can clap if you want to like really check. And then you're gonna turn the metronome back on. And that's it. You're just gonna see how well you're able to keep that pulse. And do you can do it a couple times. And that's it. Super simple. Um, this was at 60. Do it at a lot of different speeds so you, so you can get some practice and experience with it. I'll speed it up to 112. Feeling that. And it might be hard to like move that fast as you get faster, but you can still be feeling that, tapping your foot to it, clapping, snapping. 
and then turn it off and keep it going. And then check. And it's okay if you're a little bit off, if you drifted a little bit while the metronome was off, totally fine. Just make sure that you find it again once it comes back on, because this isn't about having perfect internal time. That's not the title of today. The title of today is finding the beat. So there's the beat. You have it going. And even if you slow down a little bit, you pick it back up and you find the beat again. That's what we're practicing. So that's a little bit more analytical version. And again, everybody can do this. Um, you can obviously do both or just either one, totally fine. The second version is to put on your favorite music and just dance to it, move to it. Uh, you can, again, sort of do the pseudo conducting if you want, if you can actually are more advanced and know how to conduct or and can identify the time signatures and you can actually conduct along if you want. You can clap, you can tap other parts of your body, you can still just tap your foot to the music, it's totally fine. But you just throw on whatever music you enjoy and just move to it and find the beat in the music. Again, if you're a little more advanced, you can start counting the rhythms to it. Um, I'll tell one other quick story about my rhythm journey. I think this listening to music that I like and counting along was one of the things that made the biggest difference in my rhythm. Um, this is like superbly nerdy, but <laughs> in seventh grade, um, I was learning how to conduct a little bit um, and was getting into counting. And I was also sort of getting into listening to my own music. Um, I hadn't listened to much of my own music before then actually, uh, but I would listen to it was like Jimi Hendrix was one of my favorites. I had a Jimi Hendrix album on my iPod shuffle. Uh, I'm sure my whole TikTok audience has no idea what an iPod shuffle is. Um, but I had a Jimi Hendrix album and I would just listen to it all the time and, and I would uh, count along to it, hearing the music. Um, this is the nerdiest part. Guitar Hero was also very popular when I was in middle school. And I would like play Guitar Hero a lot and actually be like counting along with the, with the Guitar Hero as I was playing. But I think it made a difference for my rhythm and, and helped me to be able to really find the steady beat in the music. So that's the, the homework is put your music on, find that steady beat. I do want to give one quick little caveat and then I'll also demonstrate this. Uh, the caveat is if your favorite music is like progressive rock or something that has all kinds of crazy time signatures and time changes, it might be a little more challenging. It doesn't hurt to still uh, be finding it, uh, but I think it's, it's definitely worth giving it a shot. Um, but it might be a little more challenging if you're in that sort of progressive rock or crazy time signature stuff. The second one that, uh, or the, the demonstration of that I'll do on the Mozart clarinet concerto. It's not necessarily my favorite music, but it won't get a copyright strike because it's old and I'm gonna sing it. So they, they won't even recognize the tune. <laughs> um, so this is what this might look like. You, you put the music on and you just move to it. So this is the Mozart concerto. Beam, bum, bum, beam, bum, 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 beam, beam, bottom, beam, ba da ba da ba da ba dee, yum, bum, dee, ba da ba dee, ba da ba dum, ya da dum. And you can just do something like that. Simple. I sort of default to this is sort of the pseudo conducting, clapping, tapping your foot, actually dancing to it, especially if it's fun, popular music to dance to, is all. Good stuff. So that's your homework for today. Uh, think about the beat, understand the importance of the beat, and then go either with the metronome, lining up with the metronome, turning it off, checking yourself, and or putting on your favorite music and just dancing to it, clapping to it, pseudo conducting, whatever you want to do to it, just to practice finding the beat and getting the connection to the beat. So that's it for today. Again, I, I'm trying to keep these nice and short and sweet and compact so that you can have time to actually take those actions and do the work. So uh, that's it. I think I'll go ahead and sign off. Uh, congratulations uh, for everybody who joined my first TikTok Live. That's been a ton of fun. Uh, it's great to be live on YouTube as well. And I'll be live again tomorrow at the same time, noon Mountain Standard Time for day number two, or day number three actually already. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna to be going over my favorite actual with music 
uh, exercise to be working on rhythm and start to build into this beat. But knowing the steady beat, finding the steady beat is going to be super helpful and super important. So I'll see you all hopefully tomorrow and we'll get into that for day three. Bye.